presidential campaign was going on in the United States, the presidential campaign that led to the election of Abraham Lincoln. And I found that you know the notes of the debate from from that uh, from from that campaign uh, should be very representative, basically, of views in the United States about uh, race and slavery and things like this. Because here you had two of the you know well there were actually several different people campaigning, but the two main ones were Steve, uh, Stephen Douglas and Abraham Lincoln, two representatives of the country who are trying to appeal to the broad opinions. Um, and we'll start with Stephen Douglas, uh, who says. <clears throat> For one, I am opposed to Negro citizenship in any and every form. I believe uh, this government was made on the white basis. I believe it was made by white men for the benefit of white men and their posterity forever. And I am uh, in favor of confining citizenship to white men, men of European birth and descent, instead of conferring it upon Negroes, Indians, and other inferior races. Um, now, I do not believe that the Almighty ever intended the Negro to be the equal of the white man. Um, if he did, he has been a long time in showing this fact. Uh, for thousands of years, Negro has been upon the face of the earth, and during all this time, and in all latitudes and all climates, uh, wherever he is wanted, he has been taken as the inferior race, uh, which, uh, with every race that he has met. Um, he belongs to an inferior race and must always occupy an inferior position. Now, unless Stephen Douglas went out and rushed out and got the origin of species, uh, and this completely revolutionized his view of race, um, obviously this is a view of race that existed uh, prior to the publication of any works by Darwin, anything about anything that Darwin uh, had any influence on. And you know, this is you know, a key concept because a whole part of this movement to claim that Darwin's responsible for all of these things, which as we'll see, he's completely going the other direction for, on, uh, is the idea that prior to Darwin, these views didn't exist. Uh, and, and it's very plain to see, of course, that they did. But I want to highlight something even more, which is what Abraham Lincoln said in one of the debates. Because, you know, we all know that Abraham Lincoln is sort of held up in this country as the, 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 the pinnacle, to the pinnacle of virtue, as the, he is the example of, you know, the, the shining light. And what Abraham Lincoln said in one of the debates with, with Douglas is, I will say that I am not, nor have ever been, in favor of bringing about any social or political equality, uh, uh, equality of the white and black races. Uh, that I am not nor have ever been in favor of making voters or jurors of, uh, of Negroes or of qualifying them to hold office or to intermarry with white people. And I will say, in addition to this, that there is a physical difference between white and black races, which I believe will forever forbid the two races li living together in terms of social and political equality. And, and this is one of my favorite quotes from, from the whole book. He says, and this is one that I think really you know, completely shatters this idea that this guy could have had any kind of racist bone in his body. He says, uh, as man advances in civilization uh, and small tribes are united into larger communities, the simplest reason would tell each individual that he ought to extend his social instincts and sympathies to all members of the same nation, though personally unknown to him. This point being once reached, there is only an artificial barrier to prevent his sympathies extending to the men of all nations and all races. If indeed such men are separated from him by great differences in appearance or habits, Experience, unfortunately, shows us how long it is before we look at them as our fellow creatures. And then he goes on and says, the, This virtue, one of the noblest with which man is endowed, seems to arise incidentally from our sympathies becoming more and more tender and more widely diffused until they are extended to all sentient beings. As soon as this virtue is honored and practiced by some few men, it spreads through instruction and example to the young and eventually becomes incorporated in public opinion. <coughs> so, <laughs> I mean... The idea that you know there is this campaign to try and portray this guy as some type of you know father of racism is so ridiculous. You know, you know when you have somebody who in the mid 1800s is talking about you know spreading sympathy to uh, the people of all nations and all races and all sentient beings. I mean, you know, there's hardly anybody at that time with any type of uh, you know saying anything uh, as open to uh, as against racism as something like that. Um, and so, you know, this whole idea of, of portraying Darwin as racist is, is ludicrous, but nevertheless, uh, you know, the campaign for that still goes on. Um, and, and a lot of it has to do with, and, and I've read these books themselves, and they even don't really quote Darwin as saying things, and they don't show uh, any type of, you know, you know, consistent link between Darwin and these other you know, Nazis or anything like this. But what they try to, uh, to go on is claiming that, well, this idea of survival of the fittest and, uh, is 
something to do with Nazism. And, and, and it is true that Nazis did say things about, you know, only the strong survive and all of this stuff, which one can relate back to evolution. But uh, they, the Nazis, uh, in all of their literature, uh, never mentioned anything about Darwin. They never